Good morning, everybody. Rabbit Hedgehog here, and we're going to be doing a commute to work today on a motorcycle that is not mine because I went ahead and borrowed it from somebody. Well, a dealer. But we'll get into that here in a moment. I want to thank AGV Sport USA for providing the gear. Today is a little nippy, about 37 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So I got my AGV Sport Flex jacket on and jeans. And uh, unfortunately, not the gloves. These are Tour Master Cold Techs, but I haven't bought any uh, winter spec gloves uh, just yet. All my AGV Sport gloves are summer grade. But also, I want to thank Law Tigers of Oklahoma and Doug Crawford with USA Synthetics AMS Oil Dealer. So we're going to be riding BMW F900XR. F meaning that down there, instead of a boxer that's spread apart there between the cylinders, it is a parallel twin. Now this is said to be a dual sport, but not as aggressive as, of course, the GS. GS is going to be your way more off-road type. And here's some things that say that it is somewhat off-road. Long travel suspension on the front and rear. And then also these aggressive foot pegs here that bite into your boot or your shoe. So that way you can maintain traction while standing up, bouncing over some road obstacles. However, I do believe they're lying a little bit on the fact that they want it to be a slightly off-road motorcycle with the 17-inch wheel package there and the Michelin GT5 road tires. So there is no way, shape, or form those are going off-road. That's not even an 80-20 split or anything of that matter. But looking at it, you know, I, aesthetically, I'm not a fan, to be real. It's too little in the back and way too much happening in the front. It just looks out of balance the whole time. Also, for off-road purposes, this pipe would, you know, need to be up a little bit more, but it's way down there. That tail comes out a little bit weird, too. You know, to meet compliance and all that. But it is a motorcycle, and there's nothing I'd rather be doing than riding a motorcycle, even if it is a little ugly. Now, as with all my videos, I put the detailed specs in the comments below or description below. But we will say that it is Brembo double disc on the front, four piston calipers, ABS, and you have your Brembo on the rear as well, single disc. Like I said, it's ABS equipped, water cooled. Parallel twin, like I said, F900, it actually, it is about 875 cc on this one. Now this is the basic of base models of the F900 XR. BMW is really well known to pay to play, and uh, you can get one of these starting around 12, 11, 9, somewhere in there. And then if you want anything extra, just prepare to pay out the nose and uh, suffer a little bit to get all the extra uh, things. This motorcycle can climb all the way near 16 grand with all the options that it has available. But this one has unadjustable front suspension. It has preload adjustable by this knob rear suspension. Um, there's no cruise control. There's no heated grips. There's, you know, none of that extra fancy stuff. So if you're trying to catch up with the Joneses, they're gonna come up and say you were cheap because you got these filler plates here where say your heated grips and your cruise control systems and all the other stuff would be. And also, if you notice, it is key operated versus the BMW keyless system. So there's definitely some noticeable things on there when you spring to only pay about 12. Now, you will get an adjustable windscreen. As you'll notice, it is Lever operated over here, just flip it. You can easily access that when you ride. You do get all the beautiful screen space there. Normally there would also be an attachment for navigation on there as well. Boot up screen's kind of cool looking when it comes online. I like the layout of the screen. Now I will say that also with the base model, you only get the two modes, you get road and you get rain. And you only get the two modes there. So not anything special. All controlled with the right grip there. 
adjustable levers on both sides for clutch and brake. Nice touch. I love adjustable levers. That way you can kind of fine tune that motorcycle to be your ride. Throttle by wire. Engine cutoff switch with starter all rolled into one. Hazard lights. And then your flash to pass here. Menu options. BMW's patented little wheel spinny thingamajigger. So whenever you're in the menu, you can go through and adjust it and do all that fun stuff. We'll go through that in a minute. Traction control on and off. Turn signals, which are self-canceling left, right, push to stop, and of course, horn. Go ahead and climb up on it. Pretty low seat height. It's around 31-ish inches or so. Like I said, I'll put detail in the description below. But whenever I'm on the motorcycle, I can easily flat foot it with a little bit of bend left in the leg to go. All right, so climbing up on the motorcycle, you'll see, like I said, a very pleasant display. I do like the way that looks. Clock in the corner, temperature, neutral indication, of course, gear indication all together. You do have this beautiful little tachometer. You do have your uh, speedometer there, distance to empty, what uh, current mode you're in. Click on menu over here on the left grip. And you'll notice that, like I said, you don't get much on this one because there's no navigation, there's no media. You, you know, you have to pair your telephone and you'll get at least a couple options back. But for the other stuff, you'd have to plug it all in and all that good stuff. So you can go through there and you can see that it kind of tells you which way to go on the menu with those arrows. So you can come down and kind of do all these settings and everything. And there's quite a bit of little things you can go through. You can do date and time units and all that good stuff. To go back, you press up on the menu. Oop, I went too far there. And then <laughs> it's a little clunky sometimes, so I pressed twice and it took it all the way back. Connections, of course, is your Bluetooth and all that good stuff. Display is what's on there, how bright, what you want to go through, all that good stuff right there. Back up with the little wheel here. Oop. There we go. So you just kind of tilt the wheel on that. You can do all the information display right there, all that good stuff, what you have, your license versions and all that, and you can reset it. But in reality, there's not really all that much there. All right, coming to the My Vehicle screen, you will see temperature, checking, all that good stuff, miles to empty, voltage on the battery. We'll get started here in a moment because it's getting a little low. You can switch through the onboard computer with your journeys, your brakes, and all this good stuff. This is a used motorcycle, so none of these numbers are actually mine. You can see you got two trip computers there. It does indeed keep the speedometer there the whole time, and that way you know you're good to go. I will say what's crazy is this motorcycle is a 2020 model, and uh, this, this particular one doesn't really have any mileage on it whatsoever. It's, it's really low in miles. Um, it only had 160 miles when I took off with it yesterday. Now it's got a little over 180. All right, we'll start it up. I've already warmed it up a little bit, so I'll kind of show you guys. This I, I like this little trick here with the tachometer. You can see it kind of highlights which one you're closest to. So you got 2000 RPM being highlighted because it's like right there and it kind of progresses and does some other things. So cool little graphic there. All right, let's go ahead, put this six speed transmission in the first. We'll take off. Now I will say that one thing I like about this motorcycle as I rode it yesterday, because this is about the third time I've rode it. Uh, this one here is a very fine balanced motorcycle. Friction zone is pretty easy to find. It's about three. If you go one, two, three, you know, kind of classic, you'll notice it turns around very nicely in a U-turn. It has a very sharp turning angle, and it's actually a very well-planted motorcycle. One thing I did note on this thing is that the chassis and the turning and the precision of everything is on point and fantastic. Um, it is it is up there with my FTR. That is that is my motorcycle that I I think compare everything to now because that is just kind of my style of ride no matter what. And this one definitely has that precision, if not even a little bit more so, being that the parallel twin offers a little bit different balance in how it delivers power versus a V twin. And this one they did kind of tune toward V twin kind of 
attitude where it pushes that torque into the lower RPM settings. So you're maximizing torque at a 6,000 RPM area on an 80, you know, 700 uh, RPM red line. So you still got a little bit to go, uh, but that torque is building nice and progressively as we get there. And horsepower is kind of the same as well. Like I said, very linear acceleration. So it accelerates rather well. And, you know, the suspension on it is pretty comfortable despite the fact you can't really adjust the front end on it. I have messed with the rear end to make it where I like it. And uh, so far I like the suspension and don't have any complaints because these broken roads will test the suspension system in a hurry. Another cool trick, by the way, on these graphics is you'll notice it tells me it wants to go up right now. It's in fourth gear and it has an up arrow saying it wants to upshift. That's basically to keep it economical and a little bit better on fuel mileage and stuff like that. So it actually gives me a little bit of an up blip. I've never seen it give me a down blip or anything like that, but it does indeed tell you when it wants to shift up. So it does have a cool little thing there. It's very subtle. It's not in your face. And I kind of like that. Like I said, going over, there's big old bumps, like right here, I'm aiming right for it. And you'll notice it doesn't even upset it whatsoever. I've been on a few motorcycles that that will actually launch you straight off of. And it's not the biggest of bumps, that's the crazy part. It's just like, I, I'm just here and you barely even hit it and you're like, Wah! but that one, not so much. So in the riding posture, this is of course a standard type motorcycle. So you're going to be close to an ADV style, a little bit more aggressive, but not much. So while sitting here, I have a slight bend in my back forward, and then I come down from the shoulders. You'll see that my arms are kind of down, starting from the shoulders all the way to the handlebar on the grip. Elbows are bent, so it's not a long reach. It's actually pleasant. It's very, these ergonomics are very nice. My hands just kind of naturally land where they need to to control the motorcycle and I cannot complain about that. It makes for a nice stable rider triangle to go with this nice hilariously stable chassis. Also when you come down so basically I'm a little bit forward on my shoulders from my hips. My hips of course we come out to my knees and then the bend back to the feet and so my feet are more in line with my shoulders where they are versus on the hips which that's not a bad deal. Like I said, it's more of a street posture than it is an ADV posture. So you are leaning slightly forward. Even when you stand up, the pegs are more indicative if you're standing up on it to be slightly forward. All right. Got to love it when the cement trucks come and dump their load halfway on the road. Makes for a sketchy adventure. All right. And I'll go ahead and while we're kind of coming down through here, I'll stand up and you can see that I'm very much well forward position on that stand up. It's not straight up and down. So it is, even though it's doable, it's definitely, definitely more of that road stance. So I even think I get a little bit more straight up and down standing on the FTR's pegs if I ever have to than I do on this one. So that one's a little bit more upright than this machine is even. This is more, you know, I, I don't know why they call this an adventure touring style machine versus a sport tour or a grand tour. I think that's where it needs to be at. All right, accelerating to the interstate, you can see it's happy to get there. It does have plenty of pep in it. It makes most of that horsepower and stuff around 6,000 or so. And it does a good job getting onto the interstate. Now I will say if you heard my voice change, probably speaking a little higher than I need to, it's because this thing produces an incredible amount of wind noise. I'm six foot tall, 32 inch inseam. So I'm not the tallest human in the world or anything like that, but I'm a little taller than what this wind protection can do. So it actually hits me right in the face mask position, you know, while I'm riding normally. But if I drop it, now it's even worse because it's really actually right under my chin bar, so it's actually lifting the helmet on the on that pot. Or it's actually lifting the helmet on the bottom there, 
So I'll go ahead and adjust that back right there. And uh, we'll keep it in the higher position. But like I said, for a taller rider, the wind uh, the definitely needs a taller windshield. I do like the fact that it is adjustable on the fly though, and no tools are required whatsoever. Visibility on this motorcycle is wonderful because you do set up so high on it. Mirrors are nicely placed and nicely done. Now I will say, if you look, that is not a clean picture. This, uh, this parallel twin from BMW is like a 270, 440 or something like that, fire order. So it's got a very interesting growl and vibration to it. It's not as refined as you would expect from BMW, but in all actuality, it is better than a lot of other uh, machines that I have been on in the past, but definitely not as smooth as a Triumph Parallel Twin, but I will say smoother than a Yamaha Parallel Twin. Now, one thing I will liken this motorcycle to is the Tracer 900 GT. Now, you would be like looking through my videos and go, well, Rabbit, you've never been on a Tracer 900 GT. And uh, you will be wrong. I just have never videoed a Tracer 900 GT. I took one out on a Yamaha demo and uh, they were very particular about cameras being involved and told me I could not have a camera even though I fought tooth and nail. And they said, well, people have to agree and not everybody's gonna agree. And I even looked at the line and said, do you agree to being on video today? And they all said enthusiastically yes, because they wanted to see the video. They knew, they knew who I was and liked what I did. And I was, I was actually so happy to meet all of them. And uh, then, you know, that lady's just like, well, I don't want cameras. Uh, okay. So I was, I was shut down on that. But the Tracer 900, of course, is a CP3 or cross plane three engine. So triple versus this one. The displacement is about 25 cc higher. So a little bit bigger, but they are shoving a whole other cylinder in there. So definitely the bore is gonna be smaller per cylinder and it's gonna make its power differently. Whereas this one is tuned like a twin and tuned like a V-twin for that matter to do more lower end grunt and torque. The, uh, the Tracer likes to freely rev and uh, makes most of its power getting close to a, an astonishing you know, 11,000 RPM red line. So it's at like 10 grand right at the end of everything, making its power, both horsepower and torque wise, it's gotta go up there. Torque is like nine to 10,000 in there on the Tracer. So you have to really ring that boy out to make it ride. And I mean, I don't mind that. I like ringing out a mid-sized motorcycle displacement because it does make for a lot of fun and uh, a lot of pep and some other things. And I, I say that the Tracer doesn't feel, oddly enough, as light on its feet as this one does. You know, it, this one here feels so precise and agile and planted. And the Tracer is just a little bit less refined in that regard. Uh, but the suspension on the Tracer is semi-active electric, you know, right on point. Whereas this one, you have to put in some extra extra dinero to get there and uh, so this one's got a conventional suspension setup so when i compare the two there the suspension is definitely going to win on the tracer because it's constantly adjusting itself and being semi-active whereas this one is you set it and forget it so this is your ronco oven of uh, suspension i do like the engine better on the tracer even i guess i know it's bigger and all that but they're so close in power numbers and everything like that. Another thing I like better on the Tracer is the Nissan braking system. Although these are Brembo's and they break just fine, both front and rear, I feel like there's a little brake fade in the in the rear brake. Like it's not as it's not as pungent as I was expecting when I pressed down on it. It definitely has some fade on it, and it needs a little bit more of a press than expected to get it to actually get some bite to it. But the front is nice and progressive. The feel is great on it. The bite is fantastic. Uh, but like I said, I think the Tracer overall has the better suspension engine and uh, braking package than the, the BMW here. And I mean, yes, the Tracer does start a little bit more than this one, 
but it starts less than the one with all the options. So this XR versus the Tracer with all the options. Yes, this one's cheaper, but that one's more, you know, when you go up in, in range on this XR, then you definitely get up there in price and actually surpass the Tracer. Another thing that I will say is better on the Tracer is the seat. We're only like, what, 10 minutes or so, maybe 15 minutes or, or less in this ride. And I, I already feel everything in this seat. This is the stock seat. It is garbage. It's like BMW wants you to immediately shell out an additional $600 for a comfort seat by putting this thing on there. It's like sitting on a sack of broken bricks and it's not pleasant at all. So it, it, that's just my, my feeling on that. I weigh about 209 pounds or so. And uh, I mean, with that weight, the this, this seat bottoms out real quickly. There's nothing there to, to support you at all. After only so little of a ride, it's just very, yeah, you know, on the seat. But as you can see, this thing is seamlessly getting through, easily traveling through traffic. It's not quite rush hour, it's just a little bit after, so I'm lucky that my time is offset, so I don't have to deal with full out rush hour traffic, but it's still nice to have a motorcycle that's capable of just slicing through traffic and feeling very well planted and very well presentable. One thing about it being as proportioned as it is, it does draw the eye to it because of its peculiarness, in my opinion. So therefore, it allows you to be seen. It gives out a good presentation for a motorcycle and you feel really well presented because as I'm sitting here, that Honda CRV, I feel like my eyes are looking above the, the roof line perfectly, like I'm sitting well above it. So I feel very well presented and very, you know, relaxed on this motorcycle because it just, it feels big enough that it's, it's there. We also have some pretty stout winds today. And the good thing is, is that it, at least with the way it's designed, it doesn't get pushed around by the wind whatsoever. It does hold a nice stable track. Even on these rain grooves, the tires that we have here today are not grabbing into those rain grooves and causing you to wander or anything like that. It is very well planted and very, very just great feeling. It's a great ride. I mean, overall, it is a fantastic ride. Like I said, there are definitely motorcycles that ride better than this, but this is a very neutral and well balanced and well done ride that it, it doesn't bother me whatsoever though in terms of the ride quality the presentation the pressing of the bars they're nice and they're wide it gives you great leverage over this machine and your lock to lock turns are just fantastic and balanced and very like everything is just nice and smooth and buttery so it's a fantastic built mediocre motorcycle and that's the weirdest thing to say because I'm just not like overly excited about it because it settles in so well but it doesn't do everything extremely great you know because the, the seating could use some work and the position if you're going to be more that ADV style you might want a little bit more upright position but I do know what it is so I ignore some of that so, I, you know, even though I'd like to be a little bit further back, you know, this one pushes you down a little bit more. You know, it, I get that preference when you're on the road to be a little bit more tucked in. So that's why I ignore that, even though, like I said, if I'm on an ADV bike, I'd like to be nice and straight up and down for the arms to come straight down and straight out versus that full out, just straight bend to the bars and putting some weight on the wrist and stuff. If I'm gonna do that, I'd buy a sport sport bike, you know. But I, I, I believe BMW is honest about what this is. You know, that more for the street, more for the, more for the travel, the grand touring than anything else. Engine noise is fairly silent when you're riding on it, so it's not intrusive. Like I said, we, we've gained temperature. We saw we we're up north a little bit in the, in the, 
area where the warm front hadn't quite retract, retract back in. And it was 37, 39 degrees. Now we're up to 46. So temperatures are going up pretty decently as we come down south today. And uh, I can feel actually a little heat on the right hand side. Oddly enough, I do feel that coming onto my shin and ankle area. Wind now, of course, is coming through from the south. You'll see up ahead, like I said, pretty stiff wind today. We had that southbound wind, so it's blowing that heat over onto that leg, and you can definitely feel it coming out. Is that something that'll be a problem in hotter conditions? I'm not sure. I'm not going to get those hotter, hotter conditions until next week. And I, I don't know yet about this motorcycle. I don't know if I want it or if I'm going to leave it be. Uh, to be real, the reason why I took it out, it wasn't for a video, oddly enough. It was for an actual test ride. I wanted to take this overnight and uh, just try it out and, and have it be my motorcycle for an, a day and, a, and an evening, basically. And Indian of Oklahoma City, the most amazing motorcycle family in the world, you know, they just let me grab it and take take away. I left my Moto Guzzi there, you know, as, as a promise to bring this back. And uh, in reality, I probably didn't even need to leave it there. I probably could have just, you know, took off with this thing because that, that's how they are. They're very, they're very awesome people. And I've, I've been talking with them and working with them since the start of their uh, dealership when Indians started up back in late 13, 14. So I've, I've known that, that family group for a while now. And, you know, we're, we're, we're family too. And uh, so that's why I have it. Um, like I said, it was, it was really not supposed to be a video. This is really supposed to be for me contemplating, do I want to make a trade? Do I want to make a sell to get this motorcycle and uh, and uh, live with a BMW? You know, because like I said, this is a new motorcycle. It's a 2020, uh, probably a little over 200 miles now on it. But you know, the <laughs> odometer doesn't pop up unless you go to the my vehicle and all that fun stuff. And I can't say that I'm like, highly enthused about it you know it, it doesn't it doesn't stir a passion in me you know motorcycles when you hop on them there's a certain you know there's a certain feel that you have as you're going through and you're doing your ride and everything like that does it connect with you and i'm i'm having this uh, feeling that this one just doesn't really connect with me whatsoever it just doesn't grab at my soul like my FTR my FTR is like my heart and soul in a motorcycle and it connects with me so well this thing does have very good turning folks like very very good turning very good power out on the turn uh, so yeah this thing grips real well I mean like I said it does things good I, I, I can't complain about how it performs because it does things good it does some things well you know, you can get your body all over this motorcycle. It's got movement. You can slide in the seat, throw your weight around. I mean, it's it's really well done from the rider perspective. I'm not going to complain whatsoever on how, on that, but it doesn't connect with me. It just simply doesn't connect with me enough to justify a trade for this particular one. Maybe the one with active suspension, you know, that's a little bit more aggressive, or, you know, maybe the one with the pro mode, you know, the XR Pro, where you get the extra sporty mode and all that good stuff. You know, maybe there's something out there that would work in this, but at least in terms of the, the base model, I just don't feel it. I, I, I feel like it's more of an appliance. It just doesn't speak to my soul. Rides rather well. Looks kind of ugly. Seat, terrible. But everything else is just pleasant. Transmission is smooth. Shifts really well. Down blip is perfect. I know that there's uh, modes on this that you can turn off the, the blipping on downshift and all that good stuff. And there's also ones that have quick shifters on them. I don't see the need for a quick shifter. I'm going to be real. 
So I don't mind this one not having the quick shifter being the base model. Quick shifters to me are, oh, I, I, I can't explain them. Um, there's nothing wrong with clutching and, and doing everything. Why aren't you fast enough? You know, we went for, you know, 50, 60, 70 years of motorcycle racing without quick shifters, probably even more than that. Why do we need them now? How come you can't just shift? You know, maybe that's just my old school thought process and way of thinking about life, but I have to say that when it comes down to it, uh, I would rather have this set up. Maybe the cruise control would be nice so that way I can maintain a more steady speed, but especially on longer trips as your hand gets a little tired sitting there. Granted, I've done 400 miles on motorcycles without cruise control. No big deal to me. No, no cramp buster even. It's because I don't really handle a throttle like most people. I roll it differently. So I'm not really using wrist power. I more or less use a subtle rolling action of my thumb and index finger to make the, the motorcycle do what I want it to do. So, you know, that could be why my hand doesn't tire out like some do. And I don't know. Maybe it would with the little bit of pressure on the you know, handlebar that I got with a little bit of downward trend on my arm. I, th this thing's self-canceling too. It is sometimes too quick. It only blinks like three times and clicks off. It's like, hey buddy. But yeah, this thing does have like, and it's six I access IMU version. It does have a way to like control engine braking and how it does it, when it does it, how precise it is, you know, it takes, it, I think that's what it is, you know, now I'm thinking about it. I think it takes a little bit of that analog nature away from the rider. You know, where some of us are used to connecting with the machine in a way that's both spiritual and, and mechanical. And uh, this one, you know, I think with some of the technology that this one even has as the base, it kind of takes away from that, um, that, that connection that, uh, that I would have. You know, and like I said, I can't hold it against it because it's a fantastic riding machine altogether. But it just doesn't speak to me in the way that I believe it should. We're going to go ahead and do some stop and go traffic here in downtown Oklahoma City. Like I said, this transmission is buttery. It's smooth. It's wonderful. The back brake, it does need a little bit of work. Like I said, it's kind of floaty back there for a motorcycle with only 200 miles it simply does not work but luckily I can supplement that with its amazing engine braking because it does really good on that but like I said I, I feel like it's a tuned engine braking it's kind of weird to say that yeah that back brake is definitely like fade fade it's weird you have to put quite a bit of punch into that with those size 14 feet So yeah, I mean, is it, is it a motorcycle I would recommend? There's definitely several people, many people out there that love these things. Um, I, I just think that this one needs a little bit more soul, a little bit more character. I know they tried to tune it in there, but sometimes you, as, as a person, as a, as a mechanic, as a person with you know gasoline running through their veins like I am, you can feel that <laughs> engineering I guess you can you can feel that um, I, I don't know you can just feel that tuning in and it's not a mechanical thing it's just a, a kind of a soulless we put this in so that way it feels like it has a soul afterthought and I don't know if I'm appreciative of that or not why don't just build a motorcycle with character But like I said, I, overall, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people that like this motorcycle and it will touch, touch them in a way that, that works for them. Maybe they like all the nannies and all the, the extra, you know, tuned in features that are kind of, you know, synthetic and stuff like that. Maybe that's something that doesn't bother them. Maybe they're not as 
wanting to be in tune with the machine as, as I am or something. You know, there's, there's always something, right? But it does, like I said, it does definitely do urban environment and such and interstates and everything. I mean, it does it great. I mean, like I said, if you look at these uh, spots here, this thing has an incredibly good turning angle. I mean, it is absolutely great lock to lock. I mean, you can walk it with the clutch. It, it is. It's got, it's got some good balance. Like I said, it's got some good things to it. I mean, if you're going to use it off-road, you definitely want something you can lock to lock pretty easily. And this one definitely you can. I mean, it, it, it has some good things to it. It, it. it really does, but overall, I don't know what I think about it still. I, I just don't feel as drawn to it as I do some other motorcycles when I first set on them and it just immediately speaks to me. You know, it has that immediate effect. But this one, this one just, I wish there was more. And that's the best way I can describe it. So if you're looking for one of those more road orientated adventure motorcycles, And uh, you're looking at BMW. I mean, am I going to say it's the worst motorcycle in the world? No. I'm not going to say it's the worst motorcycle in the world. I'm not going to say don't buy it. I'm going to say do your research on it. And I think the GS, the, the F850s, even the 750, well, even the GS, I think, just has a little bit more, you know, a little bit more character to it than this one. But like I said, this isn't isn't the worst, isn't the isn't the best, but it definitely just needs something a little bit more. At any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog, and once again, I'll put all the detailed uh, specifications, everything in my description down there below about what this motorcycle is, what it costs, all that good stuff, and um, you know, what it weighs, all that. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions about it, leave them in the comments below and we'll get back with you as fast as we can. Uh, you can tell this is not my full-time job. This is my full-time job, but yeah, I, I, I would say, uh, definitely look at it, but look at other options before you really settle on this one. Cause I think there's some out there that just do better. At any rate, once again, thank you to AGV Sport USA for providing our gear and keeping us safe since 1985. Once again, thank you, Law Tigers of Oklahoma, for having our backs if we get injured in any way by somebody's negligence or something like that. Not ambulance chasers. They only come to you when you call. And once again, what would normally be in there would be Doug Crawford's AMS Oil with USA Synthetics, but this is not my motorcycle, so that's probably BMW spec, whatever it is. But once again, if it's one of mine, Thank you, Doug, for providing that oil and keeping our engines maintained safe and lubricated. At any rate, keep that shiny side up, folks, and we'll catch you on the next ride.